Assalamu alaikum, Bushra. Inshallah, you're doing well today. Yes, Alhamdulillah, I'm doing well. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing very, very well. I'm excited about this episode of the Muslim marriage crisis. Inshallah, we're going to be talking about social media. Inshallah. Um, inshallah. <laughs> so my first question to you is, in what ways does social media cause unrealistic expectations for our community? Right. Okay, so I believe it does this in two ways. Like, mm -hmm. um, it impacts not just your marriage and how you want your mm -hmm. marriage to look like, but also when you're looking for a spouse, right? Mm -hmm. So you see these Instagram couples with these picture-perfect marriages, <laughs> and you think that is how marriage is supposed to look like, right? Mm -hmm. And what people don't realize is that they are, like, curating your experience for you. Like, they're picking and choosing certain parts of their life that they want to show to you. That's, like, maybe 10 to 15% of their relationship, you know? That's mm -hmm. not the entire picture. You right. don't get to see the messy behind the scene parts so i think that is how and like when something doesn't go right in your relationship you're like oh well like what is this like this is not how marriage is supposed <laughs> to look like right right and, right right and we have like a very um like the atmosphere in like the current in, like in the current day and age is very much like uh pro divorce or something like you know, oh, yes. every like every little thing is like exaggerated Mm -hmm. and like yeah. i don't know like they like they make a mountain out of a molehill right and right right like marriage is something beautiful but yes. um, it's not a bed of roses right no it's of course not. It's ups and downs like every relationship goes through that you know yeah yeah so i think that is definitely how um like it causes unrealistic expectations in both men and women mm. about how marriage should look like and um mm. another way i think it has this huge impact is when you're looking for a spouse, right? Mm -hmm. Whether you're a man or woman, you pick up your phone and you're scrolling and you're seeing these heavily edited pictures and videos mm -hmm. of women with their makeup done up and they've undergone procedures and you're like seeing that that day in and day out. Right. And, mm -hmm. and then you decide like and then you decide to get married and you start looking at women and when you see a regular woman it does nothing for you right right that's like a very good point she's yeah. beautiful and even if she's taking care of herself it's yeah. still not the same thing and i think even for like women like because they're following these male athletes and all these sort of mm, um, doctors, yeah. like these roided out gym athletes so mm -hmm. when they see a regular guy, they're like, um, I don't know, like I'm not attracted to him, you know, like I like I I want that. And so you know, I think that is how um it like causes unrealistic expectations. Mm -hmm. And I think um this is why it's so important for both men and women to lower their gazes, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very good point actually and I'm, I'm, yeah and like to be clear um i don't think there's anything wrong with having certain standards or you know of certain course. expectations in fact i encourage it but i think the problem happens when you like don't have any for yourself right also, when it leads to unrealistic expectations like at some point you got to be honest about the person you look in like the person that you see in the mirror right <laughs> or, like, yes but like, if you're like a woman and you're like, oh, I want a six feet guy with a six figure salary, who's right? Like in office and whatnot. Okay, that's great. But like, what are you offering to that person? You know? and <laughs> right. I don't mean this in a negative way. And no. also, like, um, how many men are there, you know, like out there who meet this very specific criteria, right? Right, right, right. And like, even like, I mean, obviously, it works both ways. It causes like um, unrealistic mm. expectations in men as well. Mm. Like they want a wife who looks a certain way and all of that. Right. Okay, but I feel like Twitter is better than Instagram, you know, because it's a yeah. text based app. Absolutely. And I think, yeah, so I think maybe like unfollowing all these accounts that cause fit not to you is maybe a great first step. What do you think? I think that's a great idea, actually. You know, I, I contemplate constantly going back and forth whether to delete my uh, Instagram account. Yeah. I, I don't know if it provides any value. I think that, um, like you said, it, it causes a lot of fitna. It's, it's, I think it's, you know, if you're, you know, taking pictures of nature, maybe, I guess it's fine, but most people aren't looking at nature pictures, right? Um, you know what I mean? It's, especially in, you know, people in their early twenties who do want to get married. I think it's, they're looking at people who are of the opposite gender. Right. So, yeah. and also that really, um, yeah, it's, it's actually dangerous. It's kind of a dangerous road. I know that there are really good accounts like, um, Kalam podcast, like, you know, there's Muslim, um, knowledge 
uh, pages yeah. accounts. Yeah. But I really don't think, you know, these girls are jetting off to Dubai for what reason we don't know for girls weekend or whatever. I think that provides a lot of, um, it also provides a lot of jealousy for other girls as well, which is not really, they don't know how they're getting there. They don't know, you know, um, their financial situation. I think that it really starts to people start, uh, envying other people which i think is and also, it also causes like insecurities when you see yes. like the perfect men and women yeah right? absolutely yeah like you start feeling like you're inadequate so yeah like and i and i know like really beautiful women who of course like that, yeah. you know? Yes, of course. It's natural, right? Because yes. they're only seeing something. I know there's a, there's a, Photoshopped um, and they, they I was just going to say, yeah, the filters have ruined everything. Yeah. yeah. There are some Muslim influencers, um, that you, that, you know, they'll say I filter free. I do no filters. I do no filters, mm -hmm. which I admire. Right. But I think that, you know, yeah, yeah. when you're a young person, um, before social media, they used to use magazines, right? And so you would think, okay, this is, so Instagram is sort of like a magazine now. And it's sort of interesting how it can cause depression because of this envy. Uh, yeah. You're like, well, I'm not this pretty. I'm not, who am I? It really, especially for young girls, you know, young teen girls who are, even growing up with social media, it's Instagram, it's very harmful on their self, their self esteem. Um, if their families you aren't really, you lose yes, confidence. yeah, exactly. Um, they, if their families are not really strong on the Dean, then they don't, they don't think there's anything wrong with that. And then they spiral into depression and self-hatred and, you know, it, they put themselves at risk at that point. It's like, well, it doesn't matter anyway. And I think it can be, um, lead to a lot of harm, unfortunately. Yeah, it can lead to self-sabotage, you know? Exactly. It's a perfect segue about, um, self-sabotage because I think that, um, people are losing hope. There was somebody commented on Twitter when we posted this, um, this yeah. series and the uh, uh, live stream that you'll be on on Friday, inshallah, mm -hmm. um, that your guest appearance on the Iftar with <laughs> Ali series, inshallah, um, people are giving up too easy. They say, oh, I, I practically give, I've almost given up to quote them perfectly. I've almost given up. And I think that, you know, like you just said earlier is people don't realize if you're giving up and you haven't even found the partner or the person you're going to marry, what happens when your partner gets diagnosed with cancer? What happens when you lose a pregnancy? What happens when your spouse's mother dies? These are really tough situations yeah. that you're going to be yeah. faced with. Marriage, you know, inshallah will be 30, 40, year, 50 years, you know, long. These are every day. You're going to have children, inshallah. You'll have, they're, you know, they're going to go through things. I mean, it's very, very difficult. That should be, you know... <laughs> It's, it's kind of ironic that people are giving up even before they're married. I mean, that's very difficult. Yeah. Marriage is a, is a hard, I mean, it's a test for us. It is truly a test for us. Yeah. I think uh, people forget, I think first and foremost, that this world is a test, right? Yes, and yes. Maybe, yes. The, uh, maybe this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing you, you know? By yeah. seeing how patient you are when you're looking for a spouse. So right. I think, um, and you're absolutely right about how people give up too easily when looking yeah. for a spouse. Like <laughs> a great analogy that I like to use here is mm. about business, right? If you're going to start a business, would you like give up after like two to three attempts or after like your first like few potential clients or prospects said, no, no, you won't do that, right? Right, so right, how right. how can you be like, uh, how can you ha like make these sort of half-hearted attempts for something mm -hmm. as important? marriage right right, like, right i know you're lonely and i know it gets difficult and you want to give up but you can't like operate like solely based on your feelings you know like, people <laughs> yeah. are like, super enthusiastic and yeah. they'll make these profiles on marriage apps and a week or two later they're like oh i'm never gonna give up married. i'm never gonna like, find them like are you serious about getting married or are you not yeah. you know yeah and you also are you yeah are you ready for the long haul right yeah Marriage is a marathon, not a sprint. So if you're giving up, people you, are too yeah. soft nowadays. And yeah, like, oh, for sure. You need, like, you need this inner resilience. You know, like, you need to persist. Yeah. You know? yeah, absolutely. Like, you have to really want it. You know, and like, it's not. I'm, I'm not saying it's gonna be like a a, a very difficult trial or like it's gonna be tough. Oh, for of course not. No, Everyone's of course experience not. is different, but like, don't compare your journey to somebody else's. You know. Mm -hmm, exactly. And also the, you know, people, 
success comes after a long period of trial and error. And I think, I think maybe that has a little bit has to do with the social media. People only see the success. Oh, I never saw the 10 years working behind the scenes. The tip of the iceberg, you know? That's right. Exactly. The, exactly. And then working and grinding before that. So, yeah, yeah. Working, getting up early, uh, you know, doing the hard work which is, um, a very sacred and also beautiful experience. Um, but it's not always, you know, kitty cats and unicorns and rainbows, but it can be, parts of it can be very beautiful, inshallah, um, but it's not always like that. And I think there is some self-sabotage to that as well. People only want the good. So um, yeah, I think lowering your expectations is something that uh, somebody people have to, like you just said, looking yourself in the mirror and just being like, hmm, who really am I? something that i do in my like match me mm -hmm. i said like the the forum has this so they have like two back-to-back -back questions so the first one is what are you looking for in a spouse so this is where they talk about all of their preferences and the second question that i ask is what are your non-negotiables so so there's just figure out the stuff that you can compromise on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there's the stuff those are like preferences you know like it's not yeah. a like they're not deal breakers you know right exactly so, um like for example your morals your character your values you know like those are stuff that you can't compromise on you know mm -hmm. of course yeah Everybody, and stuff like that mm -hmm. but there's like other stuff you can compromise on because like hey like um that is the guy doesn't have to be six feet, right? He can be five ten. So, <laughs> exactly. The, the average height is not six feet. Yes. You, yeah, yeah. Like, you gotta pick your battles. You know? <laughs> So. Exactly. And also the, the difference between, you know, 5'10 and five and yeah. six feet is so minimal that you won't even notice, you know, in real life. Yeah. So I have a really interesting story about this. Mm. I have a portal set up where people can send in like anonymous questions. So Oh, wonderful. Months, so yeah, so, so I get a lot of questions. Um, so two months back, a sister reached out to me and I'm like paraphrasing here, but she said something along the lines of the level of men I'm attracted to, the kind of men I'm attracted to, they don't want me. Oh, and, I, and she was like, I need you to tell me like, how, like how do I stop feeling this way? Because this has led to some good proposals. I was like, okay, I'm glad you realize it's a problem. Right. So I think um, at least she like, you know, like she was willing to work on it. Yeah. So I, kind of typed in and I sent in an, a whole essay but what I mainly told her was to like unfollow all of these you know random men she's following on socials yeah. and you can like kind of set up your like algo you can tell it that you know like do not yeah. like I like, I do not like this sort of content you know because yeah. eventually your for you page is the kind of stuff you're seeing you know yeah so, absolutely yeah so you, you know, like do that and um I think attraction is something that you know like it's not always instant like mm -hmm. sometimes it can like build Very up true. over time. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not saying you should marry somebody who you're not attracted to at all. Mm -hmm. But like don't expect something crazy, you know? Like so I told her like Yeah, because like it takes time to like, you know, kind of like fall in love. Yeah. A lot good. of marriages start by being friends with the person first. When of course yeah. we don't do that in, in Islam necessarily, but we can have form a, a friendship yeah. through okay, we have the yeah. same yeah um hobbies or same interests yeah. right it's like okay yeah, like, well we can like, talk about don't that. be like too quick to turn down proposals you know exactly exactly yeah, yeah that's and, a very good um, word. the other thing i told her was if you don't like the level of men you're attracting work on yourself you know like work out yes. um groom yourself like you can work on you like become more elegant try like charming and poised and you know work on those things and yeah. that will help you but like you can yeah. like automatically go from a like I don't know, I don't know if we should talk about numbers, but you can go from like <laughs> seven to ten, right? right like that right. will help you. That like that will improve yeah. your process, but you Absolutely. can't change like the base of that, you know? Yeah. So I think yeah. that is something that um, like obviously because I am much more closer to the women in my matchmaking agency versus the men. Um, but yeah, so this is something that came to mind. So that was when I realized, oh, like this is a thing, you know. Yeah, absolutely. That's so interesting. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that thing you think that people are giving up too easily? Yeah, it's funny, the numbers saying people don't like to be, you know, rate themselves. And I think oftentimes, women rate themselves much higher than they are in reality. <laughs> 
Um, men, I don't know. men do that too. Men do that. And, and I was going to say, I mean, I've seen videos online where men will rate themselves. Oh, I'm a two, I'm a three. And then girls will be like, you're an eight. And then the, you know, it's the opposite for the girls. They're like, I'm a 10. And the guy's like, you're a two, like you, you know, you're, you know, but it's also, you know, we have preferences, but we also have, um, sort of red lines. I will not marry somebody who's not on his Dean. Or I will not marry somebody who does not want children, things like that. So, yeah, it was being very, very clear. And, and also, like you said, working on yourself. Um, that's a very, very good um, uh, piece of advice for sure. And I think being honest with yourself, right? Yeah. Knowing, yeah, the, also, knowing like, the person you are. Yeah. Yeah. And also, like, getting married is one of the most important decisions of your life, right? Like, Literally. It's, yeah. it's, it's a big deal. So like, yeah. I don't know how people like give up too easily. You know? It's a beautiful process, right? And you're falling in love and you're, and you're, um, you know, it's, it can be so joyous, you know, it's going to give yeah. you the, you know, the highest highs and the lowest lows really. And it's just, it's a beautiful yeah. human experience, right? It really is. And being able to witness somebody grow and try and fail and grow and try, you know, and I think that, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful, a beautiful experience and alhamdulillah that we even get that opportunity. And then it's not only we don't get it, but it's encouraged in Islam. I think that's something else that really um, needs to be said is like, it's, you should get married. Absolutely. Like we are yeah. pro, pro marriage, pro can, family. Then you should, if you can, then you should, you know. That's like, right. I think that's like a case, yeah. Especially in this day and age where there's like so much fit now, like, you know. Yeah, I absolutely. Absolutely make it a priority. Yeah, absolutely. Jazak will hair for that. That's really, really helpful. And, and inshallah, we'll see you in the next episode, Bushra. Oh, I look forward to it.